Hi guys, my name is Rajan, also known as The Dentist Rajan. If you're here, you've started or you're planning to start your revision. Now, if you're anything like me, you get really behind in your revision schedule. Whether that's because of the sheer weight of work that you have to revise, whether that's because we produce way too optimistic revision schedules, or whether that's because we simply procrastinate and end up watching TV all day, watching Netflix, chilling with our friends, whatever it may be, distraction is a massive thing. So how do we get around this? Well, what I've found is that when I do fall maybe a day or two behind in my revision, I don't really think about the implications that that can have towards my actual revision schedule. And so if I miss a day, I miss two days, that two days can turn into a week and can turn into a fortnight, and suddenly you're really, really behind in your schedule, finding you're cramming in the last two weeks. So what I found has really helped me over the last few years is to produce a live revision tracker, which allows me to see how far I am falling behind, you know, the amount of lectures that I have to do if I have fallen behind per day, just so I can really keep on top of things and never find myself cramming or worrying in the weeks leading up to the exam. So let's go over and take a look at it. So here we have it, my live revision tracker. This tracker is great because it allows you to have a day by day analysis of how your revision is going, have a predicted revision completion date, it allows you to see if you're falling behind schedule and if you are falling behind schedule it actually adapts day by day to show you how many lectures you need to complete that day if you are that far behind schedule. So the first thing that we obviously have to do is produce a revision list, we need to work out everything that we need to revise up until the exam and whether that's lectures or topics or subjects you know however you want to do it. So I've divided all my content up into lectures. I, I've you know, scripted down lecture by lecture to make it easier for me to understand. Most of you know that I'm intercalating this year, so I've got all my BSc stuff on the left hand side as you can see, alongside years two and three of our dental course, so I can, you know, refresh my memory before I go back to dental fourth year in August. So in total we have 182 lectures that I want to complete over the next two months. I've obviously gone over these lectures already, this is just going to be this is just going to be me revising them, um, so to speak, at least once um, from the time now up until the exam day. So as you can see here, I've colour coded them, you know, to make them look a bit nicer, have them all in one place. Um, what I would advise now is for you guys, if you want to do this with me, to pause the video, go over to Excel, um, create your own revision list with all of your lectures, all of your content, whatever it is, um, colour code it however you want, make it look nice however you want, and then come back here, unpause the video, and we can hop on to the next stage. If you guys are excited to hear about how I make this revision tracker, leave a like on the video down below. Please hit the subscribe button, we're on the path to 400 subscribers and we're going to try and hit that by the end of March. So please do leave a subscribe down below if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's get into it and show you how I make my dynamic revision tracker. Right, so now with all our lectures set up, the next thing that we have to do is find a way to kind of tick off our lectures, right? Um, it's all well and good having the lectures in place, but we need to be able to keep a numerical tally of how many lectures we've completed. So the way to do that is what I've done here uh, as we get on uh, over to the spreadsheet is I've created a column uh, in after rather each subject. And what I've done is just outline um, each lecture, um, is, is outline the box uh, of each lecture. Now what we're going to do is we're going to conditionally format all of these columns. So beginning with this format, what we're going to do is we're going to go to conditional formatting, we're going to go to equal to, we're going to type equal to one, and then we're going to give it a green fill. Okay, and as you can see, it's going to stay, um, it's going to stay uh, blank because none of them are equal to one. And we're going to do that for all of the other columns right now. So condition format equal to one. Um, it's going to turn green, and then we'll just do that for the last one. And you guys can do this as um, you're going along with me. Pretty easy to do, especially on Excel. So now once we've done that, every time we complete a lecture, what we're going to do is simply just put a one in this column. And obviously now that we've done that conditional formatting, what it's going to do is going to turn it green. But this doesn't look as nice in my point of view because the one comes up alongside the green. And so what we want to do now is kind of get rid of the one. So all we see is that when we do complete that lecture, there's just a green box indicating that it has been completed. And so what we want to do again is highlight this column we could have done this at the same time, but I'm just taking it step by step. I changed the font to one, and now as we can see, um, we can no longer see the number, rather just the color. So now let's go ahead and do this uh, really quickly for the other two columns. Great, so now that we've done that, what I'm gonna do now is 
I, I, I started my revision for um, my specific period about eight days ago, and so I'm going to go and fill out all the lectures that I've completed, which will help me walk you through my revision tracker. So what I recommend if you guys are part way through your revision period, is go out now uh, and fill all the lectures that you have completed, and come back here so we can get on to the next stage. As you can see, uh, I've filled out all the lectures that I've completed over the past eight days. I think it's about 25 or so. Um, so I've gone 25 in eight days, not too quick, not too slow, um, a, decent, uh, a decent speed that I'm going at over the first eight days of my revision period. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll right and see our revision tracker. Uh, and alongside our revision tracker, I've written down all the key elements of the tracker which are going to help us create this dynamic timetable. What I'd recommend you guys to do is again make this, uh, is pause the video now and make this um, little table really quickly so you can follow me along so you can follow me along and you're not typing up all the titles uh, and trying to make up for lost time. So pause the video now, get that up on Excel uh, and then restart the video and let's carry it going. So the first thing that we're going to do is simply write down when we started our revision period. And I started eight days ago uh, on the 15th of March 2021. Easy. The next thing that is really good to have is, you know, your first exam day. My first exam day is the 12th of May. Go one of typing in there. My first exam date is the 12th of May. And so my desired completion date of my revision is gonna be roughly a week before. Obviously in an ideal world, I'll be um, finishing up a bit earlier, but I know my exam is kind of essay based, so it's really important that I know all the content uh, inside out. And so that's why um, with the sheer quantity of information I have to learn this year alongside my dissertation, which is due towards the end of April, I think giving myself a week uh, after my revision to um, finalize preparation is probably about enough. Um, and it's quite realistic. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, obviously we have estimated completion date here, but we can't fill that out yet because um, we don't have some other data inputted. So we're going to go over to total days of revision and this is pretty simple it's the amount of days from when we start revision to when we plan on ending revision so it's going to be equal to our desired completion date of revision minus our start date and it's going to give us this random date here but what we can do is we can right click and go to format cells and by going on format cells we can change from date to number and we're going to change it to zero decimal places because a day doesn't really have a decimal place and this is going to tell us that our total revision period is going to last 51 days what we also want to know is how many days have passed from the day you're looking at your tracker from the day you started revision. And what we can do is we can do equal to today. I've done that wrong, sorry. And then we're going to minus our start date. And again, this is going to give us a date, but we're going to do the same thing of going to format cells, simply go to number and go to zero decimal places. So that's correct because I started last Monday um, and the day I'm making this video is Tuesday 23rd of March. And so this tells me that eight days have passed since the start of my revision period. And this will update day to day, which is great. I don't know exactly when it updates day to day, whether it's the afternoon, the evening, at midnight. I'm not sure exactly if you could leave in the comments below if you do know the answer, that's great. But at least we know now that eight days have passed and this will help us going forward in the rest of our input. So now we're gonna to go to total lectures and I know that I have 182 lectures that I want to kind of go over. Obviously I've gone over them before, but that I want to revise in the lead up to my exams. Unfortunately for me, there was no real other way than counting up each module and just you know counting the lectures up one by one. But if you guys know a quicker way of doing so, better than just um, simply doing it in a boring manner than that, that's great. Now what we're going to do is, um, I want to know, you know, how many lectures have I completed? I don't want to have to count up every single green square each time that I complete a lecture or have to um, add one um, in a table each time that I complete a lecture. I'd rather it just do it automatically. And we've kind of done that already. We've given ourselves a means to, because every time we complete a lecture, we put one in a box. So there must be a way of adding all these ones together. And there is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go equals to sum. We're going to open brackets. I'm going to click the top. And then we're going to click the bottom of this column. And we're going to close brackets. And then we're going to do the same thing for the E column for our BDS2 work, for my BDS2 work. Go down, there we go. Close brackets, open brackets, sum. And then finally for my regenerative medicine work this year, I'm going to go all the way down to my oral biology optional module. And the next time that we have, the next thing that we have to do is I want to work out how many lectures I have left. And so um, this is simply the total amount of lectures minus the lectures we've completed, really simple. And it's going to be 
what's going on here. It's going to be 152, isn't it? So that's really good. We've got all the basic data inputted into our table. Now that we've got all the data inputted, what we need to do now is kind of have a tracker. We want to work out how quickly do we have to work over the course of our revision period to meet our desired completion date. And the first thing that we're going to do is do an average speed of work. And this is the speed of work that we need to do from the start of our revision period to the end of our revision period. Okay, so ignoring completely how well you're doing in your revision, how badly you're doing with your new revision, just an average speed of revision. And this is simply going to be, now that we've got all the data in, it's really easy, 182 divided by the total days of revision. You know, simply the total amount of lectures divided by the total days of revision. And we're going to get a figure of 3.57. I like to have two decimal places. Anything more than that just confuses me. So now we're going to go on to the current speed of work, okay? And the current speed of work is now we're going to beginning to look at a bit more of a dynamic outlook of how quickly we're working. So current speed of work is simply how many lectures have you completed to this date um, over the course of your revision to this date. And now that we've got all the data, again, it's really easy. It's just going to be the amount of lectures we've complete, completed divided by the total days that have passed. And we get 3.75. And this is good because, as we can see, it's above the speed of work. So I'm currently studying at a faster rate than the required rate to finish my exam date on the, to finish my revision rather, on the 5th of May. Guys, just quickly, I really hope you're enjoying this video. I was reading somewhere on my YouTube analytics the other day that about 88% of you guys are unsubscribed. So if that's one of you, please do subscribe down below if you're enjoying the video. Leave a like and put a thumbs up in the comments and hopefully we can keep that subscriber count going up. Otherwise, enjoy this video. So I realised going back on it that I'd actually forgotten one specific data input and that was estimated days of revision. And it's okay because we can only work it out now. And simply, the estimated days of revision is if we continued working at the speed we are currently working at, you know, when would we finish our revision? Or how many days firstly would it take for us to finish our revision? And this is simply going to be the total amount of lectures divided by the current speed we're working at. And that's going to be 48.5333 recurring, but we don't want to be having a recurring number, so we're going to take away those decimal points if my computer just hurries up that little bit, and we're going to take it down to two decimal places. Okay, so as you can see, this is roughly two and a half days um, sooner than um, we were estimated to finish. Now we can work out the estimated completion date. And we would do this by having our project start date and adding the yes, estimated date of completion. And then this will give us our estimated completion date. As, as simple as that, because we've got all that data already inputted. And as you can see, it would round it up to three days. Um, so we're roughly finishing at the moment, if we continue at our current rate, three days quicker than we, what we were originally um, planning to finish our revision at. So now we've more or less completed our revision tracker. There are just two aspects that I personally like to have, which you don't need to have, but I personally like to have, to just keep an idea of um, the pace that I need to study uh, and how I'm really doing in my revision. So the first is the new required speed of work. And this is what I like to complete. So the new required speed of work is how quickly am I gonna have to revise from today so not the start of my revision from today, so that I can still finish on my desired completion date. Does that, does that make sense? And this is more for if you've fallen behind in your revision, which I tend to. So say I'm revising at one lecture per day, as opposed to the 3.57, which is required. Suddenly, I want to know how many lectures am I going to have to do from today going forward to still be able to finish my revision on the 5th of May. This is really important because it's quite easy when you miss a day or a week of revision to really fall behind in your revision schedule and not realise the true implications it can have towards your studying. And therefore this is really important sell for me. And the way we work that out is incredibly easy because of all the data we've again already inputted. So what we're going to do is we're going to press equals and we're going to click on uncompleted lectures. And we're going to divide the uncompleted lectures by how many days are remaining. And how do we work out how many days are remaining? Well, we simply take away the days passed from the total days of revision. So, highlight that cell, highlight that cell, and we get 3.53. And as we can see, that makes sense because that's lower than the average speed of work, which makes sense because we are currently working quicker than expected. And the final cell that I like to finish off on is the schedule tracker. And this is kind of the icing on the cake, so to speak. If I'm in a hurry and I want to know how quickly I'm revising, how well I'm doing in my revision, but I can only look at this dynamic timetable for a second or so, this is a really easy way to see if I'm on target after a long day's revision, or if I still need to work harder, or if I can take the next day or two off. 
And all the schedule tracker is going to do is really simply tell us how well our vision is going. And we're going to do that by dividing our current speed of work by the average speed of work. And this is going to give us this ridiculously long value, which we're going to take down to two decimal places. And what we're going to do is we're going to conditionally format this cell. Okay? And we're going to conditionally format this cell in two ways. The first is going to be if the format is greater than one, it means we're doing well because it means that we are achieving at, um, we are working at a rate faster than um, 3.57 lectures a day, which means we are on track for hitting our desired completion date. However, we're also going to conditionally format this cell to be if it's less than one, then it's going to go red. That really sums up my revision tracker. I think it's a great way of keeping tabs on how quickly you're revising, how well you are studying, and whether you're keeping on top of your work. Now really quickly, let's just put this to the test. Let's say that your revision is going pretty badly, and you've had a week of revision, and you've only done maybe five modules or five lectures. So let's change our completed lectures to five. As you can see, the whole schedule tracker changes. Importantly, we can see that the current speed of work has gone down to less than one lecture a day. It shows that the new required speed of work isn't too bad. Now we only need to do four lectures a day to still achieve our revision uh, design completion date of the 5th of May. And this is because we've only been revising for a week. So even though we've been going slowly, we can still make it up. However, what we can see is that at the moment, if we carry on at our current rate, it's going to take us just under a year to complete our lectures. And our current estimated completion date is the final, I didn't even realise that was the case, was the final day of the year, the 31st of uh, December. And finally, yes, the schedule tracker is red and it is 0.18, which is well below the value of 1, which simply tells us that we're performing at a level well below our desired rate. And that brings us to the end of the video, guys, the end of my dynamic revision tracker video. As you can see, it's a great way of getting all your lectures in one place, all your modules in one place, having an idea of how many lectures you've kind of ticked off. Um, and I think it's a great way of feeling good about yourself when you are doing well in your revision period, which is really important, um, but it's also a good way of kicking you up the backside, so to speak, and really showing how far you are falling behind in your revision and how much you need to catch up. As I said before, it's so easy just not to realise how far you are falling behind in your revision. And this is a great way of visually, numerically showing you that you are falling behind in your revision and you need to catch up. My name is The Dentist Arrived. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Please do leave a subscribe down below if you've really enjoyed the video. It goes a huge way to me making more videos for you guys. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.